Hey guys, Atlas Shrugged 383 here. Uh, decided to do a little longer video again about my Pieta Replica Colt Avenging Angel. I just put up a short on it with a few facts about the pistol. I've talked about it on my channel a couple of times. There's some interesting history um, about this replica and kind of what it represents. Uh, it's worth talking about more than 60 seconds. So uh, hang in there, and I've got a little history lesson for you. So here she is again. This is uh, my uh, Pieta Colt Avenging Angel. Uh, I've had this for uh, five or six months. I've taken it to the range twice, had a great time shooting it. Was astonished at how accurate it is to be a, a snubby. I expected it to just be throwing wild shots everywhere at 15 yards but I could actually hit pretty well. Uh, these Colts have a great point of aim, and uh, even though the barrel is exceptionally short, it is rifled, and it, it does pretty well uh, for what it is. So let's talk about this baby here a little bit. Um, this is a 44 caliber cap and ball. Uh, most of you are familiar with the Italian replica gun makers. Pieta and Uberti are two of the most popular around these days. There used to be others, uh, Army San Marcos, various different ones, CVA. Um, but these are widely produced and probably the most familiar with most people. This is a fantasy gun, meaning that this replica is not something that Colt ever made officially from the factory. Um, it has some wild components on it to be honest but it is a gun that has a basis in history and so we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, you'll see right off the bat this is a 44 caliber so the frame and the cylinder are more of an 1860 colt army design uh, the colt army in 1860 had this step up cylinder in it to accommodate the larger round a step up from the 36 caliber navy it did retain the roll stamped engraving of the fighting ships that was also from the colt, the colt navy from 1851 to 1861 that was a hallmark of the colt navy but the colt army kept that it the army was essentially a colt navy stepped up to accommodate a larger round the barrel is octagonal, which is a little bit of a throwback to Colts from the uh, 1850s. Uh, the 1851 Navy and, um, and some of Colts' other pistols had this octagonal barrel. By 1860, Colt had changed the barrel to a rounded design. And of course, the grips. They are checkered, very nice grips. These grips are just there's no slip to them or anything like that. This is called a bird's head grip. It is not a factory Colt design until the 1870s. Uh, Colt's uh, army, single action army from the 1870s was available with this grip. It's just a beautiful day out here today. I wish I was on the range, but uh, probably not gonna make it today shooting. So let's talk a little bit more about this history. That's what I wanted to get into. I've talked about this pistol a few times and you're probably tired of, of hearing the same thing. Um, so the name that Pieta chose for this pistol is Avenging Angel. Angel. That's a, a Pieta thing. It's a marketing thing, a hallmark. But it is based on uh, history. What Pieta was getting at with this pistol was uh, tapping into the popularity of pocket pistols, belly guns, card table guns. These started to become popular in the 1850s through the 60s, 70s, and on up because when folks are carrying for personal protection, they don't necessarily want the, the big long barrel army style design or the dra dragoons, these great big heavy pistols. They want something small and compact that can be holstered or fit into a belt or a pocket and Colt had recognized the need for this uh, this type of pistol as well the 1849 Colt pocket was a much downsized pistol than the, the Dragoon series that was also being manufactured at that time 
So these pocket pistols started coming out pre-revolver uh, pre days. Derringers, single shots, uh, single shot flintlocks. There is a long storied history of small, easily concealable firearms because that's always been need. You don't always want to advertise when you go out armed. It's just not a good idea. Uh, and it aids you if somebody attacks you or you need to defend yourself or what have you. Just the surprise factor alone of pulling out a gun sometimes will, will stop a conflict or a dangerous situation. So Avenging Angel, I believe, uh, I believe that Pieta took that name from Porter Rockwell. Uh, Porter Rockwell was uh, a man of the Mormon faith. He was born in June of 1813 and he died in June 1878. And he was a f not necessarily a founding member of the Mormon faith, but he was close to the founders. He was very close personal friends with Joseph Smith, who uh, of course wrote the Book of Mormon. Um, and he knew Brigham Young. Uh, all of these guys knew each other. They started out uh, in some of the more eastern states like Kansas, Missouri area, but due to their new faith and some of the issues with localities, they, they were being persecuted for having this faith, of course. Um, that continued to push them further and further west until they ended up in Utah. But Porter Rockwell, he was uh, <laughs> so many things. I mean, he was a soldier. He was a, uh, a guide, he was a scout, a mountain man, survivalist, um, and he carried pistols, belly guns. Not necessarily exactly like this one, but he was a known gunfighter, and he one of his most famous uh, statements is that he never killed anyone that didn't deserve it. You know, this guy was straightforward. If you came at him or his group or his family, he, he would defend himself was well known for it. He wasn't necessarily a lawbreaker though. If you consider, I mean, some of the Mormon, his Mormon beliefs might've broken laws per se, but as far as uh, being a criminal or being like a bandit, he was not that kind of lawbreaker. And he even became a, um, even became a lawman when he moved out West. He lived in California for a while. He panned for gold. He had jobs as uh, marshal jobs. He did a lot in his life. One of his nicknames was the Destroying Angel. And, uh, the Avenging Angel, Destroying Angel. Uh, there were kind of militias that were set up within the Mormon faith at this time. And uh, Mr. Rockwell had been part of some of those. He was an excellent marksman. He was an excellent rifleman and pistolier. And um, the Mormon, and these guns were being modified during that time, they were being shortened by gunsmiths. The barrels cut, you know, hammers bobbed down and uh, probably custom grips made, which could fit on the, the pistols. And of course, you know, you're going down from something like this. This is a 1861 Navy, a beautiful gun, just love it. But, you know, you've got to conceal that, that barrel. That's not always what you want to do when, you, when you're incognito. I know in the old west days they didn't have uh, hoodie sweatshirts or anything, but you can see even by today's standards that avenging angel with some baggy clothes on is is very concealable. It doesn't stick out down below uh, my hoodie, and we can compare that with um, with this navy I brought out here too. Put that back in the holster there. You see, that right there, <laughs> that's not a lot, but that's enough. People know you're packing heat. So, uh, Porter Rockwell, his influence in the, the, the history of, uh, I guess, that period in the United States with a new faith called Mormonism and some of the backlash they got, uh, some of the persecution and some of the violence. There was violence associated with this. Um, that gave rise to these guns being known to be carried by Mormon militia, Mormon gunfighters, things like that. So I just thought I would share that story with you. Uh, I hope that got your interest. Uh, it is interesting.
and uh, Old West history. It's a well of, of fascinating stories and fascinating characters. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. They're not all, they're not all history lessons. Take care. Bye.